Hi friends, I'm your old pal Papa Dale. I'm a retired pastor, teacher, theologian, and professor with over 50 years of service to the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Dale Warren, but professionally I'm known in my writings, teaching, and lectures as D.A. Warren. Now my friends just call me Papa Dale, and so you can call me Papa Dale. You can see details of my personal testimony, family life, education, and ministry experience on other videos on this playlist. And so for now, let's just jump right into the topic. And let's see. This topic is the Ezra Analytic. Ezra's, Ezra is one of my favorite Bible characters. And so Ezra Analytic. Now this is the JHI, the Jan Hus Institute, the BA, Bachelor of Arts in Biblical Literature Lecture on the Ezra, the book of Ezra and the analytic of that book. And so we begin. The Bachelor of Arts in Biblical Literature degree is challenging. It attempts to develop in the student's mind recognition of the difference between a literal meaning or a literary one. Students need to know these analytical points, which are the Hebrew idioms, the literature types, and the literary devices. We need to know them so well that they can be recognized as we read and study Scripture. The difference in the application can be profound. How many misinformed zealots in history have actually cut off their hand as Jesus spoke of doing in Matthew 5.30? Tragically, they didn't recognize the literary device of hyperbole. Welcome to our exploration of the book of Ezra from an evangelical perspective. Now, Ezra is a crucial book in the Old Testament, detailing the return of the Jewish exiles from Babylon and the rebuilding, the very important rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. This book highlights themes of restoration, obedience, and God's faithfulness to his promises. As we dive into this study, we will examine the historical setting, key themes, and significant characters, while also exploring the rich literary devices and Hebrew idioms that enrich the text. And so, let's start off by looking at the Hebrew idioms that are found in the book of Ezra. Now, Hebrew idioms are phrases or expressions that carry meaning different from their literal words. These idioms add depth and cultural context to the biblical text, helping us to understand the nuances of the language and the message being conveyed. Now, there are several idioms in Israel We've highlighted six, but uh, there are more. So the first one is, set his heart. And this is found in Ezra 7, verse 10. And this means to be deeply committed or determined. The second Hebrew idiom, number two, is the hand of God. And we can see this in Ezra 7, verse 6. And this represents God's power and favor. And then there is the Hebrew idiom, lift up the head. In the book of Ezra, this is found in Ezra 1.5. And this is used to encourage and restore someone's confidence. Hebrew idiom number four is eat the fat. Now this we find in Ezra 6.9. And what it means is to enjoy the best or the richest part. Hebrew idiom number five is, fear fell on them. You can see this in Ezra 3, verse 3. And what this means is to be overwhelmed with fear or awe. Hebrew idiom number six is the one that says, by the mouth of. You can see this in Ezra chapter 1, verse 1. This refers to a message delivered through someone else, other than the message giver. And so, understanding these Hebrew idioms helps us to grasp 
the deeper meanings behind the actions and emotions described in the book of Ezra. These expressions provide cultural insights and enhance our comprehension of the biblical narrative. And so, the analytical points of uh, Hebrew idioms, lecture types, and literary devices, we get down to the number two subtext of that, and that is the literary types in the book of Ezra. The book of Ezra contains various literature types, and these literature type types shape the narrative and the theological significance of the book. These literature types highlight the structure and purpose of the text, and they reveal Yahweh's plan and response of his people. And so, looking at these literature types, and we have six of them, the first one is narrative literature. Ezra tells the historical account of the Jewish exile's return to Jerusalem and the very important reconstruction of the temple. This narrative literature type provides a detailed story with characters, settings, and plots. The next literature type is prophetic literature. The book includes messages from prophets like Haggai, Zechariah, who call the people to complete the rebuilding of the temple and renew their covenant with God. And then you have the literature type number three, which is law literature. Ezra, the book of Ezra, emphasizes the importance of adherence to the law of Moses. And this is highlighting the reading and teaching of the law to the returned exiles. See Ezra chapter 7 verse 10. Then there is the literature type number four, the covenant literature. Now, this is the renewal of the covenant between God and his people, and it's a central theme. The exile's return and rebuilding efforts are seen as a fulfillment of Yahweh's covenant promises. Literature type number five is sermon literature. And Ezra's leadership includes delivering religious discourses to instruct and exhort and exhort and exhort the people, urging them to follow Yahweh's commands and live righteously. And literature type number six is didactic literature. The book serves to teach the exiles about their history, their identity as God's chosen people, and the importance of obedience to Yahweh's laws. And so, in summary, these literature types reveal the multifaceted nature of the book of Ezra, combining, historical neg combining with historical narrative and prophetic messages, legal instructions, covenant renewal. This rich tapestry underscores the theological and practical lessons for the Jewish community and for us today. So, the third subdivision of these analytical points is literary devices. Now, literary devices are techniques that writers use to convey their message more powerfully and to, and to enhance the reader's experience. The book of Ezra includes various literature types, and they are employed to bring the narrative to life and to underscore its themes. Now, we again highlight just six and the first literary device is prose. The book of Ezra is primarily written in straightforward prose, providing a, providing a clear and detailed account of historical events and religious reforms. The second literary device is that of hyperbole, exaggerated statements that are used for emphasis, such as the description of the people's fear and awe when the foundations of the temple were laid. See Ezra 3, verses 12 through 13. Then there is the literary device of the metaphor. Comparisons are made without using like or as, such as referring to God's favor as the good hand of God upon the good hand of God upon Ezra. See Ezra 7, verse 9. Then there is antithetical parallelism, 
contrasting ideas that are presented in a balanced structure evident in the opposition between the joy of the returnees and the sorrow of the elders who remembered the first temple. See Ezra 3, 12-13. Then there is the literary device of the simile, and this is a comparison using like or as to create vivid imagery, such as describing people's unity, like one man, in their efforts to rebuild the altar. See Ezra chapter 3 verse 1. And then you see the literary device of imagery, and this is vivid descriptive language that is used to create mental pictures, especially in the descriptions of the rebuilding process and celebrations that followed. See Ezra 6, 16 through 22. The literary devices in the book of Ezra enhance the narrative, making the historical and theological messages more engaging and memorable. These techniques help convey the emotional and the spiritual weight of the events described. The book of Ezra is a profound testament to God's faithfulness and the importance of obedience to his command. So we conclude speaking about its rich narrative, prophetic messages, legal instructions, and covenant themes. In these, Ezra encourages us to trust in God's promises and to live according to his word. The Hebrew idioms Literary devices, uh, literature types employed in the book add depth and cultural context, enriching our understanding and appreciation of this important biblical text. And this has been your old pal, Papa Dale. The year is 2024, and I've been your host for this very important lecture on the uh, analytics of the book of Ezra. Now, it is a requirement if you're studying for the Bachelor of Arts in Biblical Literature degree, it is a requirement to read the lecture notes in printed form. You can do that by the um, video transcript uh, that uh, shows as the video is played. You can do that uh, by reading the actual lecture notes that are printed in, uh, below in the video notes section or in the comment section below that. Now, it's also a requirement that every time there's a Bible citation, you are to look that up in the Bible. So as you read through the lecture notes, make sure you have a Bible handy and you can just look them up as you go through. Now, if the uh, Bible citation is multiple chapters, you're already reading the whole chapter, the whole book, a couple of times so you don't have to go back and reread whole chapters. But uh, if it's a chapter or less, then you are supposed to look up that verse and reread that. Now, the Lord willing, your old pal Papa Dale will return and bring you another lecture. And so until then, uh, I'm signing off and I'm letting you know that I'm going to be praying for you, that you will be well, and that you will be blessed. God bless you.